You're listening to TDH Voice, an addiction and recovery podcast brought to you by The Discovery House. Join us for news, expert tips, and fresh perspectives on all things addiction and recovery. Welcome to TDH Voice. I'm Deb. And I am Lindsay. And we wanted to welcome you to a special bonus episode of TDH Voice. Uh, This is inspired by a conversation we were having just a little earlier this morning. So, here it is. We hope you enjoy. So somebody had advised you... Not to tell somebody that you're sober when you meet them. And when he told me that, I was just like, okay. He's like, they'll think that you're, you know, when you have a problem with drinking. I was like, okay, I won't say anything. (laughs) So... But then I would ju- it just kind of, like, sat with me, and I was thinking about it, like, what is, what's the problem, like, with being sober? Like, what is, like, what's so negative about that? So what? Like, I've made the decision, the conscious decision, to not drink for the foreseeable future. For whatever reason, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. But it just, it really bothered me how he was, like, you know, hide it. Don't, t- like, don't talk about it kind of stigmatizing it a little a little yeah and it it actually just like proved like because i know people love to talk about like oh the stigma of addiction the stigma of drinking blah 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 or this yeah the stigma of of even being in recovery and it is like in the media it's a little overplayed but it's because it's so true and it's so true that you don't even we don't even realize we're doing it when it's happening it's almost like second nature like Hmm. It's so ingrained in our culture that we don't even realize it, like, when it's right in front of us. And the use of language, I mean, as I was saying, like, to say the word sober implies drunkenness at some point, you know, to either not be drunk anymore that you were. It's it's very much like, it, it feels like they, the two have to go hand in hand, but they really don't. Mm-hmm. Well, not even just drunk, but, like... I know, for some reason, and I guess, like, I can see why he thought this, that, like, when I say, oh, I'm sober, does, it just kind of implies, like, oh, I'm sober because I, you know. Like, have a quote-unquote problem. Yeah. Which isn't always the case. And even if it was the case, who cares? You know? Agreed. I mean, it's really nobody's business. Your sobriety, anybody's sobriety, is really nobody else's business but their own. Yeah, and it's not like I'm just going to, like, walk up to a stranger and be like, hey, I'm Lindsay, I'm sober. Like, that's not the first thing I lead with, you know? It doesn't define you, just like people's addictions don't define them. Exactly. So does their recovery not have to define them? Mm Mm-hmm. And I think, like, we as a culture really do place a lot of emphasis when we talk about, like, sober versus drunk versus this and that, where it's like, Again, like you said, why should it matter so much? And why is it that we sort of tailor our language Mm -hmm. to make it so that people who do face struggles with addiction are somehow seen as as almost like second class, inferior, like Mm -hmm. they're troubled. And it's like, that's not at all true. They're people like everybody else. Well, I felt ashamed and I don't have, I'm, I'm sober because I made a life choice for myself, you know, and... It's not because I particularly have a problem with drinking. I didn't go to rehab or anything like that. But it's the way that people react to it is it has made me feel, like, ashamed in a way. Or, like, oh, I need to hide this. And I can't imagine, like, how it must feel for somebody who actually, like, legitimately has a a problem. Or that someone, you know, who has ruined their life as a result of their drinking or cannot drink because it means life or death and Mm. that just super bothers me i mean thinking about like the 12 steps and how when you go through you have to take like a personal inventory of all the people that you've wronged you know and there is i miss i imagine like a sense of sort of shame or guilt that goes along with it Mm -hmm. and of course you seek to make amends but then you have to think about like forgiving yourself and the thing is, when society makes it so difficult, and, and can be so unforgiving of people mm-hmm. who are in sobriety or, or actively, you know, struggling with addiction, it's like, it's just, it's a tough situation to be in. Why do we as a society have to make it harder on others? 
Why, why do people take it so personally? Yeah, somebody else's sobriety has nothing to do with you. It's like when you go... I, I mean, I've only not been drinking for like... I don't know. I lost count of the days, but it's like... It's been well over a month. I'd say probably about 40 days. And every time we're in a social situation, with one person in particular, actually, it's very... It's almost like it's an, a personal affront to them that I'm not drinking. Like I have inconvenienced them in some way, you know, or, or offended them. Like, uh, oh, you're not drinking? Oh, you're still doing that? <laughs> like... <laughs> Well, I think sometimes people, you know, see others' sobriety as a reflection of their own, their own, like, lifestyle yeah. choices. like, it forces them to look at themselves and be like, hmm, maybe, you know, maybe I should cut back. Or maybe they have that thought and they're like, no, like, why should I, you know? And it's definitely a very self-centric way of, of, of sort of thinking, and I mean, that's just sort of human nature, of course, but mm-hmm. like... When it comes down to it, why would you judge or really be affected by anybody's lifestyle choices of any kind? Like, if it has no effect on you, why, why let it? Because we love to compare ourselves to other people. We do, and I think that's definitely like a societally <laughs> reinforced kind of behavior, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, totally. It's, it's not enough to just be like, oh, this person's sober. It's like, well, this person's sober, but how does that have to do with me? Mm-hmm. Let's make this about me. Tell me about yourself. What do you think of me? You know, that that whole kind of, like, attitude. Yeah. I, my husband is always, like, whenever he knows something has gone wrong with someone, if they're sick, if they're not feeling well, he's like, well, am I going to be okay? And I feel like that's such a... <laughs> good example of that like I feel people that's where people's minds go maybe not everybody says it out loud but we all think it we all think it I don't know I think it's important to realize that you know for those in recovery or if you're an advocate or have like a friend who's in recovery it's it's good to sort of know how to treat them and it's to treat them like everybody else, you know, to not know. sort of single them out. I think that's it too, is because people don't know how to act around people who aren't, who, who are sober or who are, you know, it's not even just sober, but people who are clean now, like they don't know yeah. how to be around these people who have experienced like crazy things as a result of their addiction. So when you don't know what to do, you kind of put up this def- this defense, you know? We often judge what we don't know instead yeah, of making exactly. an attempt to understand it. Well, I guess I just solved my problem. <laughs> <laughs> kind of just goes back to when we were talking about empathy in episode five. Episode five, yeah. God, that was a good episode. Yeah. We keep on talking about it after the fact. But I love it so much. Yeah, no, it was good. But I think it just goes back to that. Like, I feel, you know, I felt judged. I felt a little bit ashamed. But then I stopped and I realized, like, oh, okay. Their their judgment has no bearing on my decision to do what I'm doing. Yeah, like, you're going to live your life how you see fit. And that's that's really what it comes down to. Like, let's all just sort of be a little bit more kind to each other and... And respectful, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, understanding. Because, yeah, like, this this one person in particular that seems to have such an issue with my non-drinking lifestyle is... I think it just kind of forced them to look at themselves and look at... I think it goes back to... There's, like, an old saying. I don't know if you, you've probably heard it, but it's... When you point a finger at somebody, three fingers point back at you. Mm-hmm. And it's true, it's like, you know, look inward. When you start to find yourself being judgmental, just try turning that around. Look inward. Put the shoe on the other foot. Mm-hmm. And again, it's, it really does fall down to empathy. What about, what about you guys? Have you ever felt that sort of judgment or shame over your decisions to be sober or to, to be clean? And, you know, even living a life of recovery, like, have you ever dealt with that? We'd love to hear about it. Yeah, if let you us guys, know. Yeah, let us know. And, um, yeah, because, you know, the stigma, it's, 
the fact is, is it exists and it's something we have to deal with. But, you know, how did you guys deal with it? What social situations did it arise and how did you kind of navigate them? We would love to hear from you. It is up on Instagram. Our handle is at TDH Voice. Uh, you could reach us on our website, tdhvoice.com, or email us, info at tdhvoice.com. Uh, yeah, we'd, we'd absolutely love to hear from you, and until next time. This has been TDH Voice. Are you struggling with how to help your loved one without enabling them? Get access to our resource library by visiting www.thediscoveryhouse.com for a free guide on how to help your loved one recover or call for immediate help at 877-203-8186.